Okay, guys, welcome to the July Wave 5 trade uh, support webinar where we go through the different platforms, just remind people uh, how to set up, talk through the strategy, that sort of thing. Um, first thing all I want to mention is the elite training course that is now up in the members area. W5T elite training course here and there's five main lessons in here. So we have got the core wave five trade trading strategy. This is the core strategy that started it all off for me 14 years ago. Uh, and, and I've traded this and there's no excuse. You can trade this. I traded it in Afghanistan when I was in Africa, uh, all over the world. Okay, it's a great trading strategy, swing trading, the fifth wave of the daily time frame. Really simple. Then second lesson is the, the Wave 5 Trade Futures day trading strategy. And then we've got the stochastic trading strategy for all time frames and the Wave 5 Trade multiple time frame strategy and blend investing. So five key lessons for this elite training course. Now, um, we've got quite a few people uh, have already purchased this and I'm starting live recording sessions this coming Tuesday where we're going to be looking at each less each session I do, we're going to be looking at one of these lessons, doing more examples, be able to answer questions uh, for those people that have got the course. Uh, so, and that will be recorded, then added to, to this course uh, for each lesson. So if I click on Futures Day Trading, for example, at the moment, there's the main lesson video in there. And then what will be done is the, uh, the Tuesday session, the, the live recording session will give another video, more examples, answering questions from, from users. Uh, and then this, this course almost becomes live because as I go on my trading, um, as, as I do, um, when I do recent, you know, good trades, good examples, I will put uh, quick videos together of um, sort of trading journals of how this was set up, why I went in, how I managed it, that sort of thing. So it becomes a living um, trading strategy, elite training course uh, animal, if you like, it will grow. So once you spend that $197, it just doesn't stop there. You will just keep getting those examples coming through. Um, so again, if you, need, if you haven't got this trading course yet, you can subscribe uh, here, Elite Training Course. I uh, put that link in there. And again, all the main lessons are up there already. Um, but we, I am adding to that by doing the live sessions for each lesson over the, over the summer. Okay. And so that's the link for the Elite Training Course. So Okay, uh, I'm, no, this is not MTB Pro Trevor. This is, uh, I will have a look at that, but it's uh, unusual options activities, uh, really. You know, this, is, this really is wave five trade. I want to concentrate on that at the moment because we are going to be going through a process over the next four months of merging and migrating both. Uh, and will it all be coming under one brand uh, trade the fifth? Um, so I can go over that quite a bit later if I get time. The main thing is I want to go through some Wave 5 trade things today. Of course, the live sessions are going to be traded, Fernando. That's the whole point. They're, they're live recording sessions, so I can add them to the course. Okay, so uh, eventually over the next sort of six months or so, you'll probably have four or five videos for each lesson with more and more examples Okay, I'm not just going to make this, these videos and leave it there. I want you guys to really get to grips with these strategies that, re, that use the, the Wave 5 trade trading platform. So yes, they will be recorded. It'll be the futures uh, trading one. So when you go into the futures uh, lesson, underneath the first video, there will be a second video in there. Probably between 24 and 36 hours after I've finished it. Okay. Okay, so let's crack on. So we've got some uh, new members, new users with TradeStation. So I've got the TradeStation open. This is the 9.5 version, guys, okay, because this is the version that I get from TradeStation um, because um, I'm a developer, and, uh, you know, so I 
I've got this version. It does work on version 10. We have got members on there as well. But first of all, I want to discuss how I isolate. Now, this will be on the video. I'm doing the, the video later for the scanner membership, Stop Scanners membership, and Ralph Loren will be that video, but we're going to go through it now anyway. Um, so I'm going to zoom out quite a bit here. We have got a very rangy period after that, after this initial move, guys. This is the daily time frame, okay? So each candle is a day. What we're interested in is a big move up and a pullback against that move, okay? Then that's where we want to be isolating. So let's just zoom back in again. So this, we're not really interested. Yes, we've got a bullish bias here, but this is pretty rangy. This is the big move we're interested in and measuring the pullback against. So let's just zoom in on here again. I have to get used to the controls um, for it's different for each platform. Okay, so let's go big. So I've isolated here at the low, at the end of the range bound period, just before we get the big move up. So I've isolated them. How I isolate it is I use the analysis commentary button here on the toolbar. Now, it's in different places on different versions of toolbars. It's the analysis commentary we use to isolate the bar count, okay? And simply, you just click on the low point there, and you get the analysis commentary come up, you just close that, and then the wave count is automated in there. All I've done in there for the video, and I'll have to do it again now, is just I've gone in, I can format the text to make it um, you know, a little, a little bigger, if you like. So I do, I do really big for the, um, for the video that I make each day, just to make sure people can see the wave count there. And so that's it, that's as simple as it is. To get that wave count, to get this, uh, the high probability zones um, posted on and the automated target zone, you use the anal analysis commentary button there at the top. You click on, you close the analysis commentary box and then your wave count is already on there. Where I start the wave count, after this range bound period here, this here, let's draw that in, okay? Let's just go over line, where we go. So I've got to be a bit. Okay, Trevor, you would agree that that is the big move out of the range, yes? Oh, England's got a corner, you guys. Jerry, tell me if they win. So, <coughs> so we've got a range bound period. We've moved out of that with a big move, okay? That's just, I just want to get that in a different line, different color. Okay, so this is the move we're interested in. So we need the low before this move up to isolate the wave, the bar count, okay? Um, because we're not interested in a range. That's not a trend. This, this particular uh, indicator suite, the wave five trade indicator suite and trading that fifth wave is we are looking for a, a resumption of a trend, long or short, after we've had a pullback against it. Okay, and then we've got these other things that we'll talk about in a minute again, just to remind you to measure that pullback. So this is where the, the isolation is at those lows. Then we've counted one, two, three. Okay, now if we just zoom in a little bit now on that. Let's make the four a little bigger. So you can see it okay. Okay, so the idea, I'm gonna remind you again, and it's, it's like an athlete, you just need to repeat the same thing all the time with, with a trading strategy. The way for us pulled back, it's found support in our red zones. So that's 75% probability it's gonna go on and make that new wave by buy into the blue zone. Okay, we have the 535 oscillator pulled back between 90 and 140%. 
Okay, good, tick in the box. The stochastic false breakout dots are on the top there, denoting a really strong bullish move. The stochastics pull back against that. So the likelihood is if it starts to move away, right, goal for England, 2 0. Come on. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> come on, England. We won't be doing it. If the, if the semi final's on the 10th, guys, I'm sorry. We'll cancel it for that live recording session. We'll have to do it another day because I am not missing another goal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my phone's going crazy as well so yeah the stochastic wants to pull wants to go back to its um to the to the main trend now it's got to start moving next week monday tuesday away from this low it's found good support over the last four days started to move with the higher highs the higher lows so let's go through and remind ourselves of the entry strategy i mention this every day on those daily videos but i'd like to go through it again so we need to make sure we're outside of the 6.4 moving average high, uh, which is part of the LA Wave indicator suite here, the green indicator suite. So for Monday's bar position, we're way outside of it. But we're also above all of these highs on this sort of, as we've been settling, we've been that, getting that indecision, uh, trying to find that support. We've been trying to move away. It's been failing. We've got these big wicks on the candles there. We want to be above all of that. We're above the whole $131 mark. So $131.40 would be the entry there. Now, target is way up here. So even with this conservative entry, stop loss just below the wave four, we've got a great risk to reward. Put it again of one to 2.5 just into that target zone. So we can be a little bit more conservative. And why we are conservative is we've got these very volatile markets. Yes, Friday was fantastic, but we need... Monday and Tuesday to confirm uh, that bull move again. So what we're going to do is just be more conservative with these entries because we've got great risk reward. And once the momentum starts to go, we should see that hit that fifth wave target. That's the whole idea. <laughs> Uh, Trevor, to be honest, I didn't think they'd get through. And I, I, I've got so many webinars live trade rooms i do one-to-one -one mentoring with my inner circle every month i've got so much to fit in that i needed to do this webinar today before i start the the live the live recording sessions for the elite training course which start on tuesday because i want to get as many people on that elite training course as possible so that's uh, just a, an example going through the whole thing. Okay, setting it uh, up, isolating the wave count, using the analysis commentary tool on um, TradeStation to do that, uh, and then uh, just basically going through the setup, the 535s and everything. So what I'm going to do now is just open... Uh, Mike, that would take too long. There's hundreds. There's literally hundreds. I can't spend two hours a day putting isolations on there. Okay. It just wouldn't work. Not for $97 a year. It just won't work. Um, you know, the, it's raw data. The whole idea is it's raw data to give you a starting point. And I do the daily video each day just to give you an example. Not all of them are great signals. Okay. And the idea is turning up to these, um, monthly sessions every month uh, to be able to, um, to learn more and more. You will spot the good ones when you open up the chart, okay? We will look to improve that service as we go forward. I've taken on a new business partner now from the US, from San Francisco. Some of my inner circle are getting involved and we'll be adding new uh, things to the service, changing services, adding services like futures day trading signals by SMS. Um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff happening, but at this moment in time, can't do that at the moment. I do apologize. No, it's not automated. I run the scans myself. I then put them into spreadsheets. I update the spreadsheets every day and load them up onto the website. I then have to go through 
pick a, a decent example and make the video. Then I have to make the NTB Pro video every day. Then I have to set up trade room trades every day before the market's open. Then I have to get all my inner circle trades, blend portfolio every day. It's just a full on morning. I do, it's, you know. <laughs> Yes, today's session will be, it is being recorded, uh, Chris, and will be on the blog probably tomorrow evening, something like that. Okay. So that's trade station. Anybody got any more questions on the trade station before I just uh, bring up uh, Ninja Trader version? No. Okay, so let's just move that out of the way. And let's bring the Ninja Trader version down, okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do on this one, Jerry, you mentioned, I need to go back through the chat, uh, cup, uh, stock, you was, wanted me to look at BP, BP, here we go. Okay, so don't like this double bottom. We'll look at it on the weekly first. And isolate down at the lows, see where we are on the wave count for the weekly. It's been very rangy. There's no trade on the weekly there. Obviously, this wave forward would have to be a lot deeper. Um, interesting though, we do seem to have held up over the last few weeks, but oil's had a bit of a bounce recently, and it's as you know, it's holding quite well. So with BP here, I'm just going to isolate at this point here, just to show you we're not, we're not on a wave four unless we go all the way back here. And then that's going to really ruin us anyway, because that is, that's why we are right now. We're on a wave two. Um, we've had that fifth wave move. We pulled back and then this is the start of the next trend. Um, we, we're not really anywhere at the moment. We can say, yeah, okay, this is quite subjective, this one, because we've got this big candle that rejected here. So we can look at this recent range bound period here, okay? And we can say to ourselves, right, this was the range. This is actually the trend. Where's the low to start that trend? There it is. Let's isolate. We still not got a way for. Yes, you do get ABCs on TOS if they are there. Okay, so still, I don't think really BP is looking pretty good for a fifth wave trade, Jerry, at the moment. I can't do RDSB on uh, Ninja Trader, I don't think, so I'll bring um, Think or Swim over. Let's bring Think or Swim over. RDS, oh come on, RDS, now that looks better, <laughs> straight away, as you can see very similar sort of setup here with this um, I think that looks better to me, but it's still a tough entry there, Jerry. We're going to go through an entry here. Let's, let's first of all, the first thing I do is measure the 535. So let's do that and remind ourselves how to do that. So we're looking at the Fibonacci extension. We're going to the highest point on wave three. First click, we go to the zero line. Second click, then we drag it back up to the highest point on wave three, and that's the third click on our FIB extension, okay? And as we can see there, we have indeed 
the pullback between 90 and 140 there. So 535 is good. We can see the double bottom on the stochastic here. And we've had that big double bottom support level in the amber zone. So it looks reasonably good for an entry, but have we got a decent risk reward? Because we are not going to enter until we get above this pivot point. This was the previous wave four, okay? We gapped up through the 6.4 moving average high, and then the oil price dropped and so did BP. And now we're just, we've got all these islands of all these gaps. So we need to be making sure we've got a pivot point around the same price here on the left. So when we're looking for entries on, on gappy stocks like, uh, like this, uh, Shell, um, a lot of European stocks um, like Telefonica, you know, Barclays, that sort of thing, you will see gaps in these on, on, for the US version of the shares because they've already been trading in Europe and that's what causes those gaps at the open um, here because there's that pre-market stuff. So what we're going to look for is we've got to make sure we're above this pivot here on the left and this pivot for our entry. So let's just um, put on our potential entry is going to be just above there. Okay. Oh, let's get the drawing tool on so we can make that work. Okay. Why is that not working? Let's go to drawings at the top then. Okay, it's working now. So I'm just going to go all the way back left here. I just want to go above there. And I'm just going to drag my potential entry above there. Okay, so we are slow. We slightly above on that one. So we can just adjust that higher. So this is the process I go through all the time, really. And I can tell straight away the risk reward isn't very good there. So we've got to be clear. of that pivot point. Okay, round about there. So then we put our risk to reward on. We're using the FIB extension tool again. So we just go below the wave four. This was a great double bottom here um, for the stop loss, first click. Second click on the entry and then third click on the entry again as you can see that is a one-to-one -one risk to reward that is not the sort of trade i go in for okay now you could do well but this is very dependent on the oil price so you've got to be careful that you are entering this trade in a session put an order on for a gap and the gaps could really really ruin your day so the risk to reward here is around about one to one. For me, that's not enough. That's right, because uh, yes, if you did, if you'd gone on the first breakout, it would have taken your stop loss out anyway. Uh, and, and like many trades just recently, and my inner circle guys will um, accredit this. You've got to leave those stocks on. You don't get out too early. Yes, some of them will get taken out, but a lot of them, a lot of them will not take that stop out because it's just below a big support level and then it goes on. Okay. So one of the big things of managing these types of fifth wave trades, when you're five or six cents below that wave four loan, you, that's where your stop loss is. That's where it is. Keep it where it is. If it comes down towards it, it comes down towards it. If it takes it out, it takes it out. In a lot of cases, just recently, it's come, it's come within two cents and then gone on and made those highs and made profits. So, yeah, that's, that's one thing you must remember. You know, if this is a $70 stock or something like that, we need to be at least seven cents below uh, that way for for the stop loss. TXT, Jerry. Let's zoom in on that one. Okay, that was good. 
So again, first thing you do, measure. Highest point in the wave three to the zero. Whoops. To the zero and then back to the highest point in the wave three. So as our oscillator pulled back between 90 and 40%, very good. We've got the little false bar breakout on the top of the stochastic and the stochastic's pulled back against there, crossed over in the oversold zone. Really good sign. We good sign that this really momentum starting to build on the top there. So we've had the one, the two, the three, and now the wave falls pulled back on TXT. So we are looking for an entry here. I mean, looks pretty good. The, the uh, risk to reward, um, I need to remember to add that one. TXT looks very good, Jerry. Um, so entry, we've got a pivot point here and here. Okay, this is going to ruin the risk to reward, Jerry. Uh, it depends how aggressive you want to be on the entry here. So let's just change that to red for danger. That's the stop loss. Okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, you're probably okay, but you. The, the, my my concern is, and we'll zoom in in a minute. Let's um, let's go a bit bigger on this. We've got a lot of wick, big wicks here rejecting these highs. So we, if you're going to go aggressive, uh, you've got to still be above these wicks here. You've got to be above $67. Yes, yeah. So, you know, if this crosses back down again, you'll get the yellow forming at the bottom here. So that could pull back a lot deeper. So we've got to be quite um, reasonably conservative here. Now, there's no risk to reward if you go above there. If you want to go aggressive, Fine, but you need to make sure you're still above $67, okay? 67.06 or something like that, yeah? So it's still quite aggressive, but you're above the highs of these, these big wicks here. These are rejections, okay? Uh, I mean, this was a gap up um, with an isolation here, and then we gapped down, and then we came back down again. But I'd just be a little bit wary I'd let the session open on Monday. Friday session was positive across the board. And you know, Jerry, you're one of my inner circle guys. Our blend rocketed. You know, we've got over, I think it's now 27, 28 stocks and ETFs in that blend portfolio. And they were pretty much all but one or two, all big green moves all for Friday. This was red. So, you know, this was red on Friday. So be, be, be wary. So let's just put the risk reward on there anyway. Just remind ourselves how to do that again. Um, so stop, you, entry, and there. Okay, so you still, even with that, with your aggressive entry, Jerry, you're only just... Um, you're only just in there at the 1.6 minimum. You're just at the top of the target zone here for the 1 to 1.6. I would let the session open first. For me, looking at the daily ranges on this here, I don't think it's in danger of triggering at this price on Monday. I'd like to get a nice close above the 6.4 moving average high first before I put the order on. Obviously, if it starts to rock it up, put the order on, but you'll be in the trade room anyway with me, so uh, we'll be, we'll be probably discussing this one, but I'd just be a little bit wary. Uh, Friday was a big green day, but that was red.
That's right, Jerry. You know, and you know me very well. My job is to find reasons not to get in the trade. If I can't find a reason not to get in the trade, I will pull it on. I can find too many reasons not to get in this trade right now. So that's what puts me off, okay? Right, guys, done quite a lot of stocks here. No, it's not, Steve. If the wave four pulls back below the red, you're less than 75% probability you are going to go on and make that wave five high. In fact, the likelihood is if it goes beyond this red, you're going to get a wave four failure and we're going to be in the start of a, diff, of a, of a bearish trend. This is why I, I, I devised these zones on here. These are FIB zones. If you go beyond the red zone, you are rolling the dice, okay? Uh, because it's too deep. So we've done quite a lot of stocks here, guys. Anybody want me to look at Forex uh, futures? Come on. Thing on top of the world at the moment, England winning 2-0. GC, okay, Euro, US dollar. Let's go. Um, let's go for GC first, then Euro, US dollar. Okay, so let's bring over my futures. One of my futures screens. Let's go for. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Tell a lie. That's the indexes. <laughs> I've oh. oh, got quite a few of these. Um, where is the golden oil? There we go. It's on another screen. Let's bring that down. Let's maximize gold. And this is the five minute chart, guys. <laughs> Look how rangy gold has been just lately. They're gonna win, Trevor, they're gonna win. Um, I'm quite sure. I need to check when the semi-final is now and adjust my schedule, because I will be in the bar pub for that. So gold at the moment, really, really rangy, okay? Really rangy, Jerry. And we've been working to try and find trades on this, day trades for this for quite some time, haven't we, Jerry? And it is tough, okay? Really rangy. We can see a roller coaster motion. Uh, and this, again, is part of the elite training course. I won't go into it too much, but you can see on the stochastic here, we're going from oversold to overbought, to oversold to overbought. We had a false one there. But then we're going roller coaster, overbought, oversold, overbought, oversold. Good trading opportunities, but you've got to have quite a lot of contracts because there's not a great deal of ticks in those moves. We're more likely to make ticks on pullbacks during a big move like this. Isolating at this low here is 2499. We've gone past that now, so that might not work, work too well, Jerry. Uh, 2499. Yeah, there's been very, very little opportunities on gold to trade at the moment. As you can see here, wasn't a great move up. You know, there's just literally, when an instrument isn't trending too well, you've just got to be careful not to try and trade for trading sake, okay? Uh, if there's no trade, there's no trade, guys. Don't trade something that's not there, okay? Gold, tough at the moment. There's lots of other futures contracts that will lend themselves to better, better trading opportunities. Oil's been a bit better recently. Yeah. 
as you can see, got, uh, oil's been really, really uh, ripping recently. Uh, certain days, news driven, obviously. But yeah, the, the, the plan so far, Bill, it is working quite well. Um, the, we, the, we're trialing for the next few months the um, futures signal service, trading the fifth, and also combining the stochastic strategy, which is in the elite training course, uh, to give those uh, big moves. So oil here, for example, we would have trade, we traded the third wave coming out of here, this big move up, okay? because uh, we got the stochastic green arrow coming from these lows. Um, so yeah, oil oil's probably better at the moment. Index this is doing pretty good. Let's have a look at ES. I will, Trevor, let me just, I've got to go Euro, US dollar at the moment, then, then ES. So let me just restore those cells. Let's minimize that. Um, let's... Uh, Euro, US dollar. We got a yeah. Let's go for Ninja Trader. Ooh, five minute looks interesting there. Steve, do you trade? Do you day trade um, Euro, US dollar, or do you uh, look for? Uh, longer time frames because obviously you've asked me to look at your US dollar. What time frames do you look at? Uh, Steve, if you're there, you want to look at your US dollar? I'm here. I just need some guidance for a short time frame. Let's get rid of some of these. Um, let's get rid of those. 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 And those. Okay, so 15 minutes, five days, go for that one, 15 minutes. Data series, days to load, five days, five days. Okay. See how it's gone over the last week. We obviously had a low down here. We had a nice fifth wave move and we are second setting up for one right now. I'm more interested in the one right now on the 15. Um, 6E should be the same, Jerry, ish. I've got to get used to uh, that, yeah. So uh, going out the blocks, obviously Sunday nights, um, we would be looking for a fifth wave trade. Um, Stochastic did cross on the on the way four. Obviously, went a little bit flat on the Friday. The five thirty five again, measuring it on Ninja Trader. Got to do these as examples. The whole point of these webinars. Highest point on the way three. Click zero click back to the highest point on wave three. Now the good thing about Ninja Trader is I can load up templates on these. So I can click on my template, load it up because I've got preloaded templates up there already. Oscillator pullback, apply, and there we go, between 90 and 140. Wave four's pulled back into the green zone. Looks really good to me this now. Uh, looks good for a long, if we can get if we can get a good a decent open and we put the stop loss on here okay guys so 
I'm a bit anal about this. I always set up my charts the same way. Okay. So even if I have to change and load and everything like that, I'm always putting my red line on for stop. I'm always putting my green line on for entry. And it's just something I have done for over a decade. Okay. I do the same thing day in, day out. All my charts look the same, no matter what they are. So now we've got to do the risk reward. So I want my FIB extensions, stop, entry, and my templates. I'm going to load my risk to reward with 2% there. Apply. There we go. So I think my entry is going to be around about 17, 1.17501, over 1.175 anyway. Okay. Let me just get that right. Okay. So reasonings why. We don't know how we're going to open. Okay. But if we open in this range, uh, Sunday night, stroke Monday morning, uh, we would look to go long over 1.1750. Okay. Uh, and then long our target 1.1780. Stop loss just below the wave four. It's just, you know, it doesn't matter whether it stocks Forex futures, guys. This is a great setup. Okay. We're coming from the lows right at the beginning of last week and we're on a really strong bullish move. We've pulled back um, against that on Friday. Uh, and we've gone flat. Really good setup for Forex. So we've got to be looking now um, for those um, really, really going for Forex. You, you've got to be there when they open uh, Sunday night, stroke Monday morning. Um, you know, that, that could be the move overnight. That could be that first fifth wave move. That is the, you know, sometimes you only might get two or three a week, if that on this particular time frame for euro US dollar. And if that's the one, set your alarm, get it done. Does that make sense, Steve? I like I like that setup on Euro US dollar. But Jerry, we need to look at that on futures for 6E. Really, really good setup there. So I'll look at XHB in a minute, Fernando. I'm trying to get through the list. Um, I've got ES next. So I'm going to go to ES. Uh, who asked me for ES? Bill, you've asked me about ES. Now, what do you want me to look at? You want, which time frame do you want me to look at first? Bring ES up. This is what I said. Friday was a really strong bullish day in the markets. Friday. Good, good for you. Wanted me to look at the daily. Okay. I need to do that on a different chart then because this is set up for my day trading futures. Um, so let me uh, bring that up on a different chart. Oh, the crowd are singing God Save the Queen. I've got the tally on low. I can hear it. National pride, guys. National pride. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so daily for ES. Wow. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to put the bar count back to zero. If in doubt, put it back to zero. 
and see where we are on the trend from from that zero point now we are on two year one daily is that fine for you I'm always British by uh, English by heart I was born in England in the heart of England so they're my team This is a tough one now. Obviously, I day trade uh, futures and I'm looking for longs. Um, I think if you're looking at this to gauge how the markets are performing, yes, we are bullish bias, but we've got to get through and close above 2,800. Um, you know, that's where we are. If we go shorter, we go to this and isolate here. 437. I wonder if I can get any tickets and go to Moscow. Yeah, we could, it could go lower. I might test 2,800 first. Yeah, no matter where you, where we are. So, um, got this big ABC correction. We are bullish bias, but we are going to be having to test that 2,800. And I would say that will be during next week. England win. Come on, England. Yes, Jerry, it is contracting very, very well. Now, bear with me because I don't use the, those drawing tools on here very often. Um, so I don't know how to draw a triangle on here. Can you even draw one? Semi-final, we're in the semi-finals. <laughs> so yeah, we've got this. Um... Oh my Lord, right, okay. That's one of the things. So we've got this bullish bias trend line here, guys. And then we've got what, we, what we're looking for here is to break there. So we are contracting. We're looking for that breakout to the upside. If that does happen, that three or four days that I'm looking for bullish momentum in the markets for my stocks trades, that will be well on. We're very, very happy. Okay. Um, so this is where we are. Uh, so when you're setting up, uh, you've got to look at this, um, this contraction that's happening at the moment. Yes, great day, Thursday, Friday. You know, Monday, Tuesday, carrying through, we're going to be testing 2,800. A close above that would be really good. Because we've never had a... Con uh, we've met the great, a great Britain has always been a Wales, Scotland, England... Uh, Northern Ireland because it's they, we've got devolved parliaments Fernando so we are Great Britain but within that Great Britain there are countries uh, four countries Northern Ireland England Wales and Scotland okay so they've all got their own separate football teams rugby teams and everything because we are a United Kingdom we're a kingdom of countries So yeah, that's ES on the day. Let's go to the 30 minute now. My phone's going crazy. So on the 30 minute now, we've had, wow, okay. We've got the first false breakout for two weeks. 
in the overbought zone, guys. That shows me we are getting on intraday now that bullish bias coming in, which is really, really important. Trading wise, though, we need to pull back against that. It's going to be very difficult on the 30 minute to trade. Um, We've got the double bottom here, the one, two, three, four. That was a good fifth wave move last week. Uh, then we've had an ABC correction down. And But to be honest, that's parabolic. That's not really a wave count. We'd have to go on lower time frames to look at where we are on that. And this is the whole point of the multiple time frame strategy in the elite training course, guys. Keep going through it. I cannot teach what I teach there in these webinars. There's just not enough time, okay? And the idea is to see where we are and we go through multiple time frames and we look for those trading opportunities. At this moment in time on the 30 minute, there's no trading opportunity right now, Phil, okay? And I've got to get through some of these others. Um, <clears throat> so I do think we got that bullish flag formed here, okay? So we're looking for a breakout to go up there. It's not a fifth wave move. Um, because this was just a parabolic move here. I think that third wave will continue um, going into Monday, unless we have a Trump tweet, of course, guys, okay? The Trump tweet can spoil everything. Okay, so... Um, Get rid of that, bring back an Indie Trader. Right, AZO from Raymond in the question. So I just seen those questions boxes. I'm so used to just seeing the chats there. AZO. Ooh. I don't like that bigger head board. No. No, I don't like AZO. We've had the we've had the trade this year. Really good fifth wave move. Um if I see a daily range like that in recent history, I stay clear of those stocks like you would not believe, okay? Because if we uh, set one up in the next month or so, uh, this has happened before on news, it can happen again, it'll wipe out your stops, okay? If the, and then we've got a couple of big daily ranges back up here, I'd stay away from that. <laughs> uh, right, so uh, Fernando asked me, I've got to go back now for a, an ETF, XHB, XHB, on the weekly, Fernando. I don't know about short entry. I think. I'd be saying long, Fernando, on XHB. And why? Because I'm in this long term and I'm looking for an entry, another entry above this point here, above $42. Now, the, the, this, is, this is a weekly time frame, guys. So you've just got to be a little bit uh, cautious. This is a longer term investment here. It looks like an extremely good trade on the weekly. Again, Jerry, we're in this, the pullback is deep, but we're in this not as a trade, aren't we? We're in this as a, uh, an investment part of our blend portfolio. Um, so this is why I'm looking for that second entry now above 42, so 4208 
is uh, another wrench of this because it's very strong growth, guys. Okay, the pullback's very deep on the 535, um, but we got when you zoom out on this one. Oh, I need to go on the data series a lot bigger. Um, let's go 4,000. No, let's go 6,000. There we go. So we're coming from these lows back in 2008. And then we have very, very strong growth on this ETF now, okay? So now we go back to recent times, this recent low, because what I'm looking for second entries here. So I'm looking at this low to isolate. Oops. Okay. Because I'm always looking for the most recent trend for me to add to these on the weekly timeframes in a very strong growth Again, this is, uh, I keep saying this, the elite training course are going to blend investing. And this is one of the strat this is the things we sort of look at here. So I would be going long, I would be getting my second entry once I clear this $42 mark on here. Uh, for a trade wise, you're gonna be looking at this probably on for six months uh, on this ETF. Um, but the risk reward to the target zone, if it was, if you were going to trade this and not invest in it, um, you're still looking like a good risk to reward there uh, at that sort of 42.09, 42.13 entry level. There you go, one to two into there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Jerry. Yeah, the, I mean, the whole blend strategy ties itself into not just looking at those ETFs, but the stocks within that ETF, uh, because some of them won't exactly mirror, but some of the bigger stocks in there that, that, we, that influence that ETF will be in similar sort of pullbacks um, to the ETF. So there will be trading opportunities on those stocks as well. But the, there's so much that I go through. Uh, as you know, you attended the, the elite training course live in Chicago in May. There's a lot, there's a, it's quite, uh, there's a lot involved. So we've done that. Let me go through just to make sure I've missed nobody. No, I think we're up to date. Oh, uh, uh, right. So let's go for uh, uh, quite a few people asked me for NVDA, didn't they? So let's have a look at that. Oh, no, uh, yeah, we did your US dollar. Sorry. So I'm going to look at NVDA on the daily. Looking pretty strong now, isn't it? I know there's no fifth wave trade there because I've already traded it recently. We've got to look for a decent low. That one, that pullback's quite deep there. But with all of this noise here is bloody horrible. Then we get that new low here. Oh. It's just a really messy chart now, guys. Really hard to trade. So this is the recent move I traded in the trade room, this fifth wave move here. And it was a winner, it hit the target, okay? Coming from these lows, so again, isolating this is quite difficult on a, uh, on a chart like this when we've got this horrible range period here with big moves, but we've got the double bottom, okay? Let's just discuss this again, because isolation is one of the biggest questions I get. So let's just discuss this again. So we've got the double bottom here, technical double bottom, okay? A technical double bottom is that the price is at the bottom is within 3% 
okay, of each bottom, and that is way within there, okay? That bottom is there, there, okay? Technical double bottom. Now, with a double bottom, those that trade double bottoms, you go long going over that pivot. I'm not interested, that's not my, that's not my trade. I trade the fifth wave. But when I see a pullback against a really big parabolic move up like this, that's when it caught my eye in the trade room, okay? So let's go through my thought process here. So I've got the double bottom. I've got a slightly lower low here. That is where I isolate this trend, okay? I think I caught it round up down here somewhere, but then we had the bullish engulfing. That when it's, that's when it starts to really interest me. Okay, really, really interests me. So you isolate the wave count here. We've got the one, the two, the three, the wave four, the pullback looks really good. We traded it, I think, off a 240 uh, on the, um, in the trade room rather than the daily because uh, we can smooth that out. But again, that's all about multiple time frame strategies in the elite training course. But at the moment, stochastically, there may be a trade here on NVDA. Um, I'd just be very wary um, about the entry. I think, I, I think I mentioned in the trade room, above 250 would probably be better for me. So we've had a good move away from these loads. But look at this, red, green, red, green, red, green. That says to me, and these are big candles as well, okay? But look at the volume on the bottom. Let me just um, make that bigger. Ah. Contraction in volume until Friday. Okay, we were steadily contracting in volume. Always keep an eye on the volume. Okay, so all of this indecision, we were contracting in volume. We got an increase in volume on Friday. That's nothing, could be a one day wonder. Okay, we need confirmation. We need a higher high, a higher low with higher volume on Monday. Okay, we get a close above 250, then we look for a long to go test back at that 270. Okay, we need this volume to start to increase. We don't need a one day wonder, we need higher volume, higher high, higher low on Monday. Close above 250, good. Now, if we get halfway through the session and that volume's already equal Friday's session and we're looking like blasting through 251, you're going to go in. Okay. Uh, but that's a stochastic trade. Again, that's part of the uh, elite training course uh, that we have um, on Wave 5 Trade. So, um, but th that's just one type of setup we use for the stochastic. Let me bring that volume down again. There. Okay. OIH is the next one. Jerry, you've got time. When's the next, when's the England semi cuts semi final? I we mentioning volume on every session. Yeah, which date, Jerry? Fernando, on the eleventh, the eleventh, eleventh of July is a Wednesday at two p.m. There'll be no trade room that day, guys. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, you know, if you want to subscribe, that's fine. But England are playing in the semi-finals on Wednesday the 11th at 2 p.m. And I will be in the pub. There'll be more trades the next day. So, yeah, Fernando, I'm going to go through um, volume a lot in the um, sessions, the, comp the additional sessions that we start uh, recording next week, um, going into that, because you, you're in my trade room, so you, you, you know I, go th I talk about volume a lot uh, in there, um, so that'll be in there. So OHI, double bottom here again, that is freaky. Mm, no trade there. So we've got the double bottom, we've got the peak of the double bottom, we've got the stochastic crossover. Why isn't my 
I think I've got a, the old style stochastic on here. Um, have I got the old, yeah. Oh, no, no, there it is, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is another one for the stock app for a stochastic trade. Got the double bottom here, almost to the tick, really. Um, and then going through this high, and this is a brief, and I know quite a few of you's got that um, elite training course, but this is the type of another one of those stochastic strategies I talk about in one of the lessons there. Double bottom. Okay, we've had a one, a two. You trade the double bottom when it goes through the pivot. We get the green arrow on our indicator suite. That's the signal to go long. That was the trade. Okay, we haven't got a trade on there now because we've pulled back really, really deep and we're potentially on a bearish move. So there's no trade there at the moment. The false breakout dots denote a strong trend. So if it's in the overbought zone here, strong bullish trend, okay? Then in the oversold zone, strong bearish trend. So we have gone from strong bullish to strong bearish. This is gonna be a very, very tough uh, trade to trade. Okay, so what we look for, um, on the stochastics, for example, Trevor, and you'll be, I know you've got the elite training courses. Uh, we're looking for no false breakouts. And then once we get into this stochastic trade from the double bottom and the false breakout dots start to occur, we're good. Yeah. It makes us really relaxed and we can see there's a really strong bullish move there. And then again, in the training course, I talk about how to manage those trades and that sort of thing. Um, so that's O I H. And there was one more, I've done XHB. Okay, guys, are there any more questions? Not specific tickers, but questions about um, a particular trading platform, how the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite behaves on there, the um, No, it's not, Eli. It's part of the elite training course. Okay. There's only the, the training boot camp is designed to build this foundation for the strategy, how to use it, what the Elliott Wave means, and build that foundation for using the um, the Elliott Wave indicator suite and that strategy. The elite training course then takes you that one step further. We go through the, the core wave five trading strategy again, and then we start going into the day trading future strategy, stochastic trading strategies on different timeframes, the multiple timeframe strategy, and the blending vesting strategy. So the, the four hour training bootcamp builds that foundation, gets you used to using everything, uh, what everything means, all that sort of stuff, um, building up the picture of basically how the indicator suite works, how the strategy works, how to use it. And then obviously once people start to use it, start to get success and I can guarantee, well, if I can guarantee, uh, but the, you know, that I get, I get a lot of emails saying this is amazing, Paul, thank you very much uh, for, you know, for building this um, indicator suite because it does work. I had one guy and I don't know whether he's in today, he bought the indicator suite while I was asleep one night. By the time I'd woken up, he'd done six charts and sent them to me by email. He'd been doing harmonics and fibs before. He then put the, them onto the indicator suite because he'd already drawn the charts and my and all the pullback zones, target zones and everything were pretty much exactly where all his stuff was and it was amazing. We've not got any decisions on other platforms at the moment, Jerry. As you know, Tao, my uh, new business partner, he will be in charge of the development phase. First of all, we've got to get the new website, the new membership offering sorted out, get the launch in October, and then it will be deciding which platforms to develop for next. Um, you know, E-Trade 
could be a possibility. Sierra charts, another one. Um, NT4 is the big one that we'd, we'd like to do. There's lots and lots there. So it's trying to prioritize because it's cost as well. It's, as you know, you've seen um, the code for this. It's bloody complex and it's hard. That's why no one's ever done it before because it's really tough uh, to, to program into um, a trading platform for a broker. Um, usually it comes in a you know, multi-thousand dollar um, package with you know, $300 a month um, data fees. So it, you know, we're doing well, we've got it on four platforms. It's working pretty good. Uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm liking it. Eli, that, you need to check your, um, I did add you to the automated system. So you will need to check your spam first. Uh, if it's not in the spam, I will have to send you it manually, but the, I've not had any problems just lately with the automated system, I must admit. The automated system works well because it has the files to download. Sending them by normal email sometimes doesn't work. Yes, Trevor, on the 10th, I'll be sending the emails out tomorrow. The first one is, um, okay, we've got the lesson on futures day trading strategy. Um, so this week's lesson, extra lesson, if you like, for lesson two is doing more examples on that, answering questions, doing the setups, just on that trading that fifth wave. And then uh, in a couple of weeks time, we're gonna do the stochastic strategy and that will be for July. And then August, we're gonna do multiple time frames and blend investing. All right, okay, 8 p.m. my time. Okay, that's okay then. Yes, Bill, that's the whole point. I've, I've launched, we've got all the lessons, the main lessons, I've recorded those. These were given live in Chicago. They're already on there. The next phase of this elite training course is to add to that. And these are these live recording sessions during the summer. So those that have the elite training course will be invited to attend all of those. And then those recordings will go under each lesson as well, okay? And I don't want to leave it there. You know, over the next six months to a year, I'm going to be putting more videos on there. I really want this elite training course to grow. Once people get the basics right, take it to the next level with these strategies. Okay. And again, I will, if you're not, if you've not got the elite training yet, you can get it here. I'll give you the link again in the chat. Yes, James, um, we are looking at interactive brokers. It's, it's whether they allow add-ons and what sort of data they've got and all that sort of thing. That, that really does depend on where we go. Um, you know, do they use MT4, for example? Um, you know, there's, there's lots of things that, that, that might stop us from developing for certain brokers. That's the thing. Yeah, okay, Eli, when I get off this, I will look into it and get it done all manually for you. Yes, it will, yes, uh, Trevor, yeah, on the 10th of July. It will be for, um, and it won't be anything else, it will be just the futures day trading strategy. I do it as a live recording session. I'm going to go through more examples. I'm going to answer your questions just on the futures day trading strategy. Okay, James. Five minutes, Bill. Five or three, but the, the, the benchmark is five minutes. And I've been uh, developing this strategy now for six months. Now we're in three months testing of the um, signals part of that and then we hope to launch the futures day trading signal service sms service in october i don't do anything quickly i'm afraid 
I make sure it works properly <laughs> and it's profitable first. So far, so good. The futures trading strategy is very solid and you're not necessarily trading every day. You're certainly looking for certain setups, but when they go, you can really accumulate some good ticks there. Now I'm going to do the emails first, then I'm going to get a shower, Trevor, and then I'm going to go to the pub. Okay, guys, well, let me just stop the recording here. Uh, thank you very much for attending. That's okay.